Okay, here we are folks at Bo's house and we have pretty much everything ready to go. We have the motherboard. This one is compatible with the Q6600. We did double check that beforehand. We have eight gigabytes and four two gig variants of DDR2 here. I believe these are clocked at, well, I wanna say 866 megahertz. I'll have to double check on that. Uh, we do have the Q6600 here. This is the one I purchased, if you watched an earlier build, uh, off of eBay for I think just $16. So nothing special, but it will, uh, definitely pull its own weight when we finally assemble this and we'll show it all to you. Solid state drive. I regard these as necessities at this point. And then, uh, Bo, what did we get? What, what kind of uh, picture do we have I believe it was the uh, 950. GTX 950? Yeah, GTX. That's actually the same one that uh, I recommended to Jacob. <laughs> was it? Yeah, and that's only because uh, we can use CUDA acceleration when we render videos. Okay. So uh, you'll, you'll basically take a lot of stress off of the CPU yeah. when it comes to rendering. It just, it just helps things out. So uh, we have that. We have the power supply too. That was the other thing I forgot. Uh, this is just a 500 watt. This is more than plenty for what uh, his computer will be demanding under full load. And then the last piece of the puzzle is the Corsair 400C. You guys saw me review this. I've built in it several times. Uh, I painted that bottom tray white, but Mr. Bo here is a professional painter. He's been doing this for a while now. Yeah. So uh, he might he might change things up just a, just a little bit. Got any ideas, Bo? Uh, I might do a color shifting color between maybe a blue and green to, you know, so when I fade the light, maybe come into my room or something, you can get a cool different video from it, whichever way I want to face the computer. So from like video. over here and yeah, then you might get a blue, over here. And then you transfer, it might be green next time. Folks, that is going to be very interesting. We will definitely follow up with him once we assemble this thing. Speaking of which, Let's go ahead and get started. The Q6600 is going in there, and Mr. Bo is going to do all the work. So, uh, Bo, here you go. Here you go. All right. All right. It is in there. All right. There you go. You install the CPU. Okay, now with the RAM, you want to align the notch on the actual DIMM with the notch on the motherboard. Okay. So grab both corners. Right here. Yep. And push down. And push down pretty hard. All right. There you go. All four sets of RAM. So we have eight gigs in total. It's been a while since I've tinkered with the T4. I already know what I'm doing here. There you go, see? Right. You can probably wing this without even looking at the manual. Let's just do it without looking at the manual. It'll be alright. It'll be alright. Alright. There we go. It's actually not bad. Add a tiny uh, bit more than that. Okay. Just a tiny bit more than that. Yeah, just a tiny bit more. A little more doesn't hurt. A little less is it's catastrophic. That's perfect. All perfect. Right. Folks, what do you think? Hey. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below what you would rate that out of 10. I'm going to leave this one up to you, man. This is you. Oh, this is all you. Fun. That cable right there, this powers your fan and control its PWM. Okay. So it'll base pulse width modulation. So we want to plug that header into or this, this lead yeah. into the header on the board that says CPU fan or something along those lines. Okay. This right here is the IO shield. You're going to want to put this Right in there, it snaps into place. This is one of those things, we all have to go through this part. Yep, so use that as your guide. Let's see how well he does on his first attempt, folks. Good, looking good. And then just check the standoff. We're sitting on it, we're not, is it supposed to be poking Oh, you know what, it might just be a screw in one. That it's might be true. Looks all, aligned, check all the other holes and I'm make sure they're lined up. Seeing holes in every one. I'm impressed. First attempt, you did that quicker right. than I usually do it. Yep, uh, do you have a small screwdriver? I did not bring one of those. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if we can't find something. There she is. Ah, there this she is the is. old trust. Dum, 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 dum. Aw. Folks, this is not Misty or Mako. This is uh, Mr. Bo's Pomeranian. Trixie. Trixie. She's 13 years old. She's the old one. 13 years oh, old. Hello we there. Oh, perfect. That's exactly what we need. Let's do, uh, let's do the biggest one. Right. Get more torque that way. Is that a magnetic screwdriver? Sure hope so. Sure hope so. That's why you don't go with cheap ones. Mm, mm, this will be fun. All right, good luck, Gary. So if you drop one of those screws, we're gonna have to flip the whole case over okay. to get that one screwed. Got a magnetic one now. Magnetic. There we go. It's a little bigger, but oh my goodness, it makes things so it's much so easier. so much easier. See there, folks? I recommend it. All the dirty behind the scenes work you're getting right here, folks. You can't, you can't pay for this. Hey. This is just... You either get it or you don't. Well, you can pay. Donations go to... <laughs> Donations go to Bojangles. What is it? At II Bojangles underscore? There it is. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. See, look at that, folks. That is my philosophy, folks. Cable manage as you go. Looking good. Okay. Right. So, got the motherboard installed. We have CPU installed, the RAM installed, and the uh, CPU cooler installed, along with uh, some minor cable management from the CPU fan uh, cable. 
running through the back of the case. Now, uh, I guess it's just up to you now, but what do you want to do next? We have the power supply, the solid state drive, the graphics card. What yeah. you what you feeling? The graphics card looks cool. Let's go with that. Oh, he's going with the graphics card next, folks. Okay, jumping the gun a little bit. Right. All right, no problem, no problem. You don't uh, you don't uh, still use VGA, do you, do you, Bo? No, no. no, no. I'm, I'm I'm just past that. Just, just past last week, actually. Oh, last week. What are we on HDMI now? Yeah. My <laughs> man, you just gotta slide it in, basically. Just align it. That that metal prongs on the back of the card should miss the motherboard. Perfect, and then just slide it on in there. There you go, just like that. Oh you installed a graphics card. I assume we're gonna want to screw this back. Exactly. Now the key here to eliminate any potential graphics card sag is you're gonna want to hold this upright uh -huh. while you screw it in, just like that. I should say, Bo has been like a painter for the past four. Like this guy <laughs> can paint anything you want. Like he 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 could paint like just a tiny little portion of something somewhere, and it would look like it was professionally done. This guy painted rims and cars, like whole cars, and it just it looked like. A stock paint job, it was that good. So uh, it'd be interesting to see what Bo decides to do with this case and with the components inside. Should he should he desire to paint any of this stuff? You know, Which I have a feeling, I have a yeah. feeling you're gonna want to. You know, put some mention what color y'all think will look cool down in the comments and maybe oh. I'll, you know. Oh maybe yeah. I'll spice up every other week there for y'all. You know? Oh man, we're gonna have one of them like color change and color change in yeah, PC, every, every so week is gonna be something different. Look at that. Let's see if we have any GPU sag here. Um Mm, very, very minimal. Like we're talking less than a degree of sag. Looking good. I like that. I like that. It's a, it's a light card, so that helps too. Now, what's next? We have solid state drive, and we have the power supply. You know, I, I don't know at all what this is or where it's going to fit. So we'll leave that last. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Mc, McLovin thought this was the power supply. So, okay. Yeah, he, he was. About him then. Yeah, he. That's. Uh, I'm glad. This one's a little bigger, and so I probably. A smart man probably would have waited with the graphics card because it's going to okay. leave a little more room to work. Yeah, with that's, heavy... that's the only reason people tend to go with a PSU first. But I mean, I know I make this look light. <laughs> I mean, but this is a good 15 pounds. It is that's a good 15 no, pounds. Right, you can get some curls with that thing. Yeah, I may be exaggerating there, but You've got a good 500 watt here. This thing will be practically silent even while the PC is under full load. That's why I love these EVGA power supplies. I recommend them to any uh, budget conscious builder who seeks advice. So if you have a question about a power supply and you don't need anything expensive or ostentatious, go with an EVGA 500 or 600 watt. Or if you have a super, uh, super chill passive system that doesn't demand a lot of power at all, even a 430 watt would be just fine. This one fan, we're gonna wanna uh, insert facing downward because we do have an air filter, a dust filter down here that you can remove and clean over so time. Right there. So, yep, just like that. And you'll want to just slide her in, make sure them cables are, are out of the way. Are we going to want them down there or sit? Um, you can push them like that. Right? Yeah, that's fine. That'll work. Right. Yep. In order to get a fully modular 500 watt, under most instances, we're talking about probably double the price. So, uh, I think it's worth putting up with the cables. What do you think, Bo? Absolutely. Yeah, it just, it just comes down to preference, but in, in most cheap budget builds, I, I wouldn't recommend a modular power supply. I'm very excited about the benchmarks of this PC. I think this PC is going to perform admirably. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do is uh, install the solid state drive. I, we can go ahead and do that before we start wiring everything up, because you'll, you'll need to wire that one up anyway. All right, the biggest one's going to something important. Mm-hmm, all right, it's good to start with that one first, then. Don't tell me. Oh, it's right there. Oh, the big white. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Oh, no, I well, see it. That's in a very uh, unorthodox so place, to be completely honest with you. We almost could have kept this in there. We need to be mindful of this 8-pin CPU power connector up here. Mm -hmm. So we just decided to run the 24-pin across the GPU, uh, across the whole motherboard. And, uh, yeah, it's not the prettiest looking, but, you know, it's much. It's it's, it's a lot more functional. And uh, if we ever have to remove the bottom panel, yeah. all we have to do is unhook the 8 pin from here and then the peripheral or the uh, front IO pins down there. That should be it. Now all we have left to do is power the solid state drive and, uh, and then we'll plug in the front IO connectors and then run a SATA cable from the SSD to the motherboard. And then we'll wire up the LEDs starting with this block up here and then cable manage and then put the panels back on and then boom, but we'll be ready to install the operating Good. system and yeah, I'll start playing around with this thing, see how powerful it actually is. All right, go ahead and pop that now. back in. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'm over here putting too much force. So your solid state drive is now powered. Um, kind of wrap those cables. I guess you can kind of try to tuck them under here. We'll get some tie straps and time mm, over here too yeah. if you want. One other thing we do need to power are, are your LEDs. Uh, so that's a Molex power. So you see four distinct pins. Pull up the uh, four distinct pins power 
leads from your power supply. It'll be none of those, it'll be all in the same. Yep, just like that. And uh, now all we need is a single SATA cable, and that is uh, in my box of goodies. My Ziploc bag of goodies. This thing right here, folks. Bunch of good stuff in here. We need one SATA cable, and uh, let's see. Go ahead and pull one out of there. Yep. Yep, looks that good. Works good. Okay, so we got that in, and uh, from the back side here, we have to plug the other end of that SATA cable into the solid state drive right there. Uh, I'm gonna wait to check the manual to see where these plug in. These are, this is for the front panel, and uh, there's no, there are no markings on the board. I'm assuming it's gonna go in, in one of these. That's fine. But uh, we want to make sure that we plug those in correctly. Okay, so here's the picture. This is what we need. Our power LED positive is on the far left up top. Our power LED negative is two pins to the right of that. Uh, so we'll have that one, and then we'll have our power switch. So our power and then our ground, so this is positive, negative. And then our reset switch, reset, and ground, so positive, negative again. And so uh, now all we have left to do, Bo, we've already kind of cable managed. We want to come around back here and check this out. All right. Uh, I think we did a pretty good job considering what we had to work with. Keep in mind, we had to use a non-modular power supply, so all these extra cables here that aren't being used, we just stuffed down there underneath the basement. But it looks pretty good, I'd say. Yeah, it's it not some... bad. We see we have LEDs on the inside. There's little grooves right here. I don't know, of course, we did this on purpose. Four LED strips if you wanted to insert them, but it worked out. That's where I put them. So we have them here. And then our cable leads, we're mm -hmm. going to plug these into these two cable leads on the coming from the little power supply core we got up top. And then, uh, then we can close it up, power it on, see if everything works. So one of them's good. Yeah, one one's going to hook sure. male to female. The other one. problem is we got female to female down here. Which, believe it or not, I can, I can do that confidently yeah, yeah, yeah. myself, well, you know? All right, so I'm going to get a couple shots of the front there. That's what it looks like. That's the finished product. It's not, not turned on, of course. Yeah. They're on in there. Uh, make sure the monitor's on. That's the only other thing. Um, power power is... You see a blue light? Yeah. Yep, blue light's on. Okay. Let's see what happens. And that's the PC. All right, we gotta make sure the power on the power supply is on. I don't think it unless it was already switched. There it is. Uh -huh. uh, do we have the LED remote? I'll, I'll leave you in charge of that. Good, we have a green light on the motherboard. That's a good sign. Get on. And, uh, ready? Three, two, one. Oh. Oh. Look at it. Oh. 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 Let's hope we get a post. Good sign. It's a good sound. Hey! <laughs> we have color, folks, and of course it's not going to post because we don't have the operating system installed yet. So let's go ahead and do that next. Let's go over to boot. We're going to set our boot device priority first to our USB exit and save. So now when the computer reboots, we should automatically be thrown into Windows 10. Okay, so the computer seems to be doing okay. And uh, we've installed the operating system. Right now we are getting ready to boot into the OS for the first time. Y'all, you are gonna see this cat fetch. Check this out. All right, buddy. Look at her, look at her go. You see that, do you see that? Did she just brought this it? thing back. <laughs> that is the smartest cat I've ever seen. Yeah, pet her too, you know, reward her. She's smarter than, our, than my pups. What's up with, <laughs> what's up with that? Yeah, she knows, see, she's like, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Hi there. Hi there. Hey, we are in. We are in Windows 10. Bo, how do you feel about that? Fantastic. We got a new upgrade. We're going to be able to play some better games at better freight rates with uh, better ooh, ooh. everything, you know? And our second set of LEDs is actually not plugged in at this point because we don't have the converter. But I'll bring that one to him. I know I have one in the office somewhere. And uh, the second set down here will be on as well to light everything up even more than it already currently is. So let's get to installing some drivers and then we'll run some quick test benches before I get out of here because I know Bo wants to start playing that CSGO. He's been waiting, he's been waiting, and uh, I don't want him to wait much longer, so uh, stay tuned. Okay, we're going to go ahead and run Cinebench here. We can see our CPU is fairly quiet and stable at a chilly, well, not chilly, but 36, 37 degrees Celsius. So uh, let's go ahead and run Cinebench now. Okay, so our score was uh, 235, which 
isn't all that great. Don't worry about this being cut off. We're, we're dealing with that on a separate issue. The more incentive we have now to overclock. So let's go ahead and try to do that. This is a P5Q motherboard. I, I believe we have support for it. So uh, let's hop into the BIOS real quick. So our Q6600 is now overclocked to, we just did a modest three gigahertz here, uh, but we should see a fairly substantial boost in our score. I'm expecting around 300 uh, and Core temps are at 6263C across all four. And keep in mind, that's with the Hyper T4. So pretty good. We might aim for 3.2 gigahertz and then uh, call it a day. And our final score, 286. So we're right on the edge of 300 CB. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and overclock just a little bit more. So, but when I were just talking, uh, you know, he was saying, if I want to upgrade in the future, what should I upgrade to? You know, what am I expecting to pay? Um, and it just ultimately depends on on what you know what you're looking for power wise. This is good enough to get them started. But I, I told him, you know, the the Q6600 here cost me 16 bucks on eBay, 16 dollars. Uh, you can't get any modern CPU anywhere close to that price that'll perform as well as this thing is. So you're getting for 16 bucks a CPU that's getting a score of 325 CB. Uh, overclocked to 3.4 gigahertz and we did bump our V core to 1.4. Uh, I told Bo if anything happens, you know, you get some blue screens in the middle of games or whatever, just to call me and we'll fix it. It looks to be stable at 1.4 volts and 3.4 gigahertz. Bo, are you, uh, you happy with what you got um, so far? I'm very excited to, you know, get started on YouTube yeah. and play my games and enjoy it. Yeah. It's gonna be very enjoyable. All right, folks. So uh, this is it. This is his uh, his corner for now. He's gonna do a lot of uh, a lot of furniture moving and all that, getting his new new uh, corner set up. He's got a nice L-shaped desk and a nice BenQ monitor on the way, right, Bo? Oh yeah. Yeah. He's Hopefully gonna, here next week. He's gonna be setting it up. So uh, for some, we'll do some gaming benchmarks in this. I guess it wouldn't hurt to uh, download a couple games. I have my hard drive. I can bring over here too one day, and we'll just benchmark the heck out of this thing. We'll see really yeah. how well this thing handles. Uh, handles gaming and uh, video editing. So when you start video editing as well, I'll be interested to see how well that does. But for now, folks, 325 CB on the Cinebench score, that is not bad. Stay tuned for those gaming benchmarks for now. Not a bad build for what, 350, 400 bucks? Yeah. 400 bucks. Nice, nice, bro. All right.